Can you talk a little bit about, uh, in your experience, where DML technology has been used? Because, mm -hmm. you know, Tectonic is kind of, uh, was the first company, <laughs> I think even talking to you, that we've seen that they've taken a technology and, and tried to develop it to the nth degree yeah. in terms of power handling, uh, manufacturing, let's say manufacturing uh, processes that we're trying to develop because we're trying to control it so to you know to a very very, very high degree yeah, high quality a yeah. very high quality you know it, which is required by again required by the application yeah, yeah. Um, because you know I, I have to you know I came across DMLs in the early 90s yeah. and my experience of them was kind of like a they were making these little flat panel computer speakers yeah 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 and and I think it was at a CES show maybe in 89 or 90 that I went to walking around and I saw the, this this little display of little tiny flat panels. Back then, you used to get the, you know, you get the pair of speakers with the, with the subwoofer under your desk. Oh yeah. But this guy had two little, you know, and they were kind of cute. Um, and then, of course, they sued me because I was working at a flat panel company. That's another story. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, you you've been around it, and in your experience, where have the applications mostly been? Yeah, I mean, this is this is the thing with with DML and what we've learned. Um, is that you need a big you need a big panel because you want to get a number of wavelengths mm -hmm. of bending wavelengths across the surface to actually get the, the the benefits of the DML technology. You know, if you're if you're using a small panel, the chances are it's not going to be modal until much higher frequencies. So you're going to be essentially driving it as a partially partially clamped. But when you say that, is it basically that the, that the physical dimensions of the panel aren't large enough for you to get it to resonate? And is that yeah, a right yeah. way of describing it? Yeah, like, like I drew uh, so on, on the board So, kind of like here. a small transducer, relatively high corner, or re relatively high FS, what we would say. You know, it has a relatively high uh, uh, modal uh, no, frequency. Yeah, not, not even, ah, well, even when you talk about the FS or the fundamental resonance of the transducer, because, mm -hmm. again, remember, the, the exciter is actually just like more or less just like a, a conventional motor. Yeah, and that's where I am trying so, to put, put my points of reference relative to how a DML works is yeah. using kind of like the same thinking and the same uh, terminology. Yeah, so you still have a, a fundamental resonance. Um, now, it depends on how the panel is suspended around its edge. If it, it could be with a roll surround, it could be free, um, in which case it will be just like the, the fundamental mode of a, of a piston loudspeaker. Mm -hmm. um, and then as you go higher in frequency, you start to get the the modal uh, activity in the panel, um, and then you start to get the, the, the distributed mode benefits <coughs> of the diffuse output and the wide directivity. Um, so the idea is, is that we, you know, we would try and operate a DML in a, in a region of, of high modal density. And when you've got a small panel of this sort of size, to, to get high modal density, you're either going to have to go very high in frequency or use a very floppy panel. And a very floppy panel is generally not a not a very good idea for a number of reasons, but partially things like robustness, um, but also, you know, you, it, it's just going to be a soft, floppy object. Um, so, yeah, a larger panel, and, and that's where the technology has, you know, has really come, come into its fruition, is when we realize that we need a large panel, and then you can get this fantastic diffuse source that's, that's got a wide queue. Um, Okay. Absolutely. And also, you know, in interestingly for me as well is, you know, my background is less on the pro side. You know, that's where I'm learning a lot of, a lot of you know, from you, um, you know, designing transducers for just a few watts, you know, or 10 watts. And now we're looking for hundreds of watts. And, uh, and this, you know, this, this has been a, a fantastic to see the technology being able to produce something that's over 100 dB at one watt, one meter. Um, yeah, it's... it's uh, Phenomenal.